Good afternoon. Welcome to the National Air and Space Museum. I'm Brian Nicholas with the Archives Division. And today I'm going to talk about aircraft license plates, those numbers on the side of the airplane and what they might mean to you or me or people working in aviation history. The numbers on an aircraft, uh, usually with American aircraft anyway, can be assigned by the military or can be assigned by the Federal Aviation Administration. But what really matters is the aircraft serial number, which is what a number that you don't normally see. It's usually mounted on a metal plate inside the aircraft. For instance, the Bell X-1, the number on the tail of the aircraft is 6062. Now that's a shorthand abbreviation for the military serial number, which is 46-062, signifying that the aircraft was procured in 1946 fiscal year in the 62nd airplane the Air Force procured. But the Bell serial number for the aircraft is 44-1. It's the model number from Bell Aircraft, and it's the first of that model number produced. Some aircraft, the serial number is a consecutive number. It runs from the first aircraft the company made all the way up to whatever is current. Other companies will break them down by model number, such as Bell having the 44 designation uh, to signify that is the Bell Model 44. Rutan on the Spaceship One from Scaled Composites, it's actually Scaled Composites Design 316. And the serial number is 316-1. Uh, it's the only one produced. Now the registration number, which is 328 Kilo Fox, signifies something special in that Rutan normally for scaled composites and his earlier Rutan aircraft factory would use the model number as the registration of the aircraft. In this case, they wanted to signify the altitude they had to break to receive the Ansari Prize, which was a 100 kilometers in altitude, but 100 km was already taken, and the company that had the uh, aircraft with that as assignation did not want to give it up. You can actually apply to the uh, FAA, much like getting a vanity license plate, and say, I want this registration. Or you can work with somebody who already has a registration and see if they'll trade with you. There's an office at the FAA in Oklahoma City that will work with both parties and work things out with you. In this case, they did not want to give it up, so they defaulted to 328 Kilo Fox, which signifies the altitude in feet rather than in meters. So, and if that had been taken, I imagine they probably would have defaulted to 316 SC for model 316 scaled composites, which is usually the default that scaled composites or rutan uses. Now on the Spirit of St. Louis, it was an experimental aircraft, so it has an X prefix. However, they actually kind of jumped the gun on that because that really wasn't official with the FAA or its predecessor, the CAA, at the time. And if it had been official, it wouldn't have had the dash between the N and the X. So it's kind of an anomaly in that regard. Now, the F-104 that hangs up over the escalator to our left is NASA number 818. And it's also the civil registration on the aircraft. But that's also the, um, the seventh F-104 built. It's a YF-104A. And so the serial number for the aircraft is 183-1007. But when it was first built, it was turned over to the Air Force. And it had an Air Force serial number. And the Air Force at the time also painted their serial numbers in large block letters and numbers on the side of the fuselage. In this case, it was FG569. It's what is known as a buzz number. It supposedly uh, actually should be called an anti-buzz number. So the pilots would not do these high-speed passes over their hometown or showing off to their girlfriends, 
somebody would get irate that it scared their cows, they could look up and say, hey, it was FG-569. And the Air Force could backtrack it and say, FG, okay, that means it's a fighter. G means it's an F-104, 569. Okay, we know the airplane. We know what pilot, and he's in trouble. So when you glance at an airplane, you can check the numbers over, even out on the airport today, and you'll see fleet numbers on aircraft. You'll see registration numbers. Using all of them together or even individually, you can figure out the history of the aircraft. And in some cases, um, like the uh, FM-1, it's up in the Naval Aviation Gallery, the National Air and Space Museum's Archives Division, we have microfilm reels that tell us the history of that aircraft based on that serial number that the Navy or the Air Force would produce monthly or yearly, or in some cases they would consolidate all onto one card, and it would give you where the aircraft was delivered, where it was built, in the case of the uh, FM-1, it was built in Linden, New Jersey, and then it was delivered into Kansas and went almost immediately into storage because it was built so late in the war. And eventually it was declared surplus and the Navy turned it over to us at the Air and Space Museum. And similarly with uh, most of the other military aircraft in the collection, although there are exceptions to the rule, the P-51D that we have in the World War II gallery, we do not have a record card on because it was maintained in the Air Force inventory for so long that it doesn't appear in the cards that we have. You would have to go to another facility, such as the Air Force Historical Research Agency, and get the information from them on that type of an aircraft. Well, thank you very much for attending today, and we appreciate your visiting the National Air and Space Museum. Thank you for listening to this edition of Ask an Expert. A companion question and answer session for this lecture may also be available. For a schedule of upcoming Ask an Expert lectures at the museum, please visit www.nasm.si.edu.